Senior Counsel for Global Affairs, Mike Pompeo, former Secretary of State, who's joining us now. Uh, Secretary Pompeo, I want to go right to you on this because you've been outspoken about it. It sounds like to me that you put forward this, these four or five members of Congress to kind of throw the test out there about what they'd like to do with court packing. Four new justices, all appointed by Joe Biden, get rid of the filibuster. And as you point out in some of your tweets, you know, it always will. It, to me, I think it'll turn on two things as they test this. One is we have to do this to protect the voting rights, so they're going to try to make it a race issue. And second, it will be an issue on abortion as always. Jordan, nine. Nine. It works. It's constitutional. It reflects a central understanding about how the Constitution works and checks and balances. Your point's exactly right. This is a power grab. I remember, Jordan, they talked about us and the Trump administration undoing institutions trying to add a couple of states, trying to get rid of the filibuster. Now they're going to try and see if they can't convince enough Americans that the idea of packing the court to their political bias is the right thing to do. This is at the center of the American tradition, and we've got to do everything we can to stop it. I know the ACLJ will be very much at the center of this fight. We certainly are. Um, Mike, you've got a, you sent out a tweet today that says, our Supreme Court justices uphold the rule of law and not the emotion of law. Packing the Supreme Court to tilt favorable outcomes brings partisan politics into the courtroom. SCOTUS is the last place we need political games. But, it, you know, it's kind of a, I said this earlier, it's a dual sword here. They want to pack the court with four new selections and get rid of the uh, legislative filibuster at the, and use that as the reason why to do it. So this, you, you're, you're, as Justice Breyer said, I mean, we just had a piece on during the break. That's We're right. recording Justice Breyer, which I never thought I'd see in my, uh, <laughs> but that's great. Uh, and yeah. he's voted with me a couple times. Not not a lot, but probably 30, 40%. But here's my question. Um, they're really trying to do a double thing here. I mean, they want to pack the court and get rid of the filibuster at the same time, using the court packing to get rid of the filibuster. Yeah, they're, they're, the two notions are important that they go together because they can't get one without the other. And in tandem, uh, they think they've got an argument they can make. You you began, or Jordan began, by talking about race. They will they will use this issue as a wedge to divide the American people and try and present the case for what they're attempting to do. But no one should be fooled. This is about power. This is about denying political accountability and turning the Supreme Court into nothing more than a political rubber stamp for their progressive ideas. Those twin actions, the efforts on the filibuster and the efforts to pack the court go alongside of each other. They are complementary, and they will push on each of them just as far and as fast as they can. I think we should play Justice Breyer's quote for our audience to hear the whole the whole quote. This is for our radio audience, too, because they didn't see it during the break. This is Justice Stephen Breyer at Harvard Law School uh, back in April, talking at Harvard Law School, about basically court backing. Take a listen. The rule of law has weathered many threats, but it remains sturdy. I hope and expect that the court will retain its authority, but that authority, like the rule of law, depends on trust, a trust that the court is guided by legal principle, not politics. Structural alteration motivated by the perception of political influence can only feed that latter perception. This, and this is, Secretary Pompeo, this is exactly, Justice Breyer's right. But this is exactly what they are doing. And they announce a commission on Monday and then put the legislation forward on Thursday. Yeah. They're going to try and bum rush this thing, move as fast and as far as they can. Make no mistake about it. It's going to take each of us raising our voice, making the case for why this is uh, any democratic. It strikes at the heart of our republic. We, we can't let it happen. You know, uh, to quote a former senator, it would be boneheaded. Yeah. to do this it would right now president. it would it, it, look it just and and, and this this goes for the, the, the republicans shouldn't do this either when we're in power this isn't the kind of thing where one party should decide they have their moment they're going to go drive a uh, republican to the ground and deny these checks and balances this is about principle this is about our central understanding about who we are as americans and what makes our country unique and we all have to and the aclj has got to be a big part of this yeah. we've all got to work really hard over these coming days and weeks and it'll probably extend to months while the biden administration tests test America to see if it's prepared to push back against these progressive efforts. Yeah, because they throw in there too, oh yeah, and we'll have to do away with the filibuster, of course, to get this done, I mean, which is like, that's no big deal. Uh, but, you know, you also wrote about, we we, we started this, uh, Secretary Pompeo, which is that, you know, abortion always kind of taking center stage in these debates about the Supreme Court and uh, the Title X rule change. You've talked about that. You wrote about that on our website uh, being published today by the Biden administration, rolling back basically the pro-life policies of the Trump administration. 
Uh, I mean, how, how far reaching is this move by, by Biden to do this? So it's pretty broad, Jordan, and pretty deep and deeply immoral. Uh, the work that the State Department did when I had the privilege to lead it under President Trump and the work that the administration did more broadly to protect every life from conception till natural death was real and important. Uh, my part was to make sure that uh, foreign aid assistance that went around the world didn't end up underwriting so-called family planning, uh, the guise, the rubric, the, the false words used to really describe abortion practices from NGOs that are underwriting other countries' efforts at abortion. We were serious about it. We were thoughtful. We were determined. We made sure that no taxpayer money ever went to underwriting an abortion. These are family-destroying activities, and now the Biden administration is opening that back up on doing not only the Mexico City policy and all the work that we did to protect life, but now this change to Title X will fundamentally undermine these, this most central right that every human being has. You know, Mike, you've got another piece. We've got a couple pieces up by Secretary Pompeo, so you're going to want to see this. Uh, faith and foreign policy essential to our republic. In fact, that's our lead article up right now. Give us a little bit of, of what you are you were trying to get at there, because it's a very important issue. Of You've made it clear that faith in the public square is not only consistent with Americans' Judeo-Christian tradition, but necessary for our republic to, uh, to continue exceptionalism. Jay, Jordan, you all know American history. Uh, I saw our ambassador to the United Nations yesterday try to undermine that, talking about what a failed formation the United States had. Nothing could be further from the truth. We literally, we were founded on the set of Judeo-Christian principles that is a sh shining light to the world. And so for elected officials and each of us, we have to bring faith into the public square. We are, we're, we're a nation that has a First Amendment that says we're not going to have an established religion but we're going to make sure that every human being has the right, every American has the right to practice their faith that they want to. And you don't give that up when you move into the public space. And it was always important for me to make sure everyone knew. I, I'm an evangelical Christian. Uh, I love Jesus. And I always told folks that the way I think about the world is informed by that. And if we strip that out, if we move that away, uh, these issues are connected, right? The, the idea of packing the Supreme Court so that you can change things like the Hyde Amendment, you can do all of the things that, that run afoul of our republic and our constitution. These are things we can't permit. And it's why I'm so excited to be part of this organization that works so hard and files amicus briefs on Title X issues and all the things that, that truly matter and can change the way this administration is restricted. That new piece is just published yeah. the last couple hours called Faith in Foreign Policy. This is very unique to have from a former Secretary of State, a faith in foreign policy essential for our republic uh, by Mike Pompeo, uh, again, a, a senior counsel for global affairs at ACLJ. You'll only find that at aclj.org. So check that out today. As always, uh, Secretary Pompeo, great to have you as part of the team. Thanks for joining us today.